awesome planner friends, Ashley here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm getting my bullet journal set up for August. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of bullet journaling. The one that I have is from Archer and Olive. I will link it down below in the um, description box. I've ha honestly had this for like mm, over a year now, uh, maybe a little less than a year, but I've had it for a while and I haven't used it. And right now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm kind of like up up in the air with my planners. I've been trying new planners, new layouts, um, different brands, just trying all sorts of different things, trying to find some planner piece and find, maybe find a new planner that I like or maybe not. I don't know yet. So um, this is one of the ways that I'm doing that is I'm going to get um, back into trying out my bullet journal. So here on this one, what I'm doing is making the cover page for August. I went with a koi fish. I actually love koi fish. I have a tattoo of one on my um, left shoulder. They represent so many awesome things. So I love koi fish, and I went with a went with one on there. It's not the best looking thing in the world. I'm not I'm not an artist, so let's just throw that disclaimer out there. Um, I do like to draw and stuff. I'm just not not the best at it. So I have the koi fish at the top, and then below that will be some coral. Um, what I do in my bullet journal, whether I'm, I'm creating a title page, you'll see me create the monthly section. I also create a weekly page for the first week of August. Uh, I always start with pencil. I outline everything in pencil, kind of um, draw everything out, and then I go over it with pen. And I'm using a ton of different pens for this, honestly. I was using my Papermate Inkjoy in 0 0.7, and this thing was just it was streaking so bad. Um, you see that blue sticky note there? I kept writing on it. It did great on the sticky note, but for some reason, um, when I was doing it over the pencil, it was streaking. And I think it's just because it was going over that pencil mark. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But it was a hot mess. So I ended up ditching that pen, and I used a different one. And then I have my Sharpie S notes up there. And I chose some different blue colors. And for those, um, that's what I'll be using to color in the coral reef, which... You'll see whenever it's finished, it's not the cutest thing in the world, but it's my first time ever drawing it, so I think it turned out okay. It's not the not the greatest, but it does work out just fine. Alright, here comes the fun part. We're going to start coloring this in and you'll notice that I keep flipping to the back and I have a sheet back there that I just used to kind of test some colors out and find some good color combos that I like. So I just used some sheets in the back. I know I'm not going to use this entire bullet journal so I'm not worried about losing a few pages in the back of it. Um, I should have probably used a different um, way to color this than the Sharpie S notes. They don't blend well together. I mean, that's not their purpose. And I know that, I just wasn't thinking apparently. I do have some, oh, I don't know what they're called now. And they're put up. Okay, well I have these other markers that, that blend okay. And I probably should have used those. Or um, I like coloring with coloring pencils. So I don't know why I didn't do that. But it turned out okay for my first time making it. Lessons learned, I'll, I'll know that for the next time. It's my
To go over August, I'm using the Tombow Dual Tip Brush Pen, but here's the thing. I am not very good with creating calligraphy, so being able to use the brush tip of the Tombow to create thin strokes and the thicker strokes all in one like swift movement, I'm not very good at that. So what I do is like faux calligraphy. So I take the um, like nib end of the brush pen, the one that's more like a marker, not the actual brush pen part. So I take that one and I go over August 1st and then I take the brush pen side of it and I do thicker downstrokes to make it look like it's calligraphy. All right, now that the cover page is finished, we are going to make the monthly section for August. And I was going for like a little bit of a minimal kind of layout here, but after it's finished, it's not really my favorite and I feel like it's missing something, you know? So, well, what I may end up doing, probably not, but I might, we'll see how this goes. I might add a koi fish to this or some more of that coral just to kind of decorate it a little bit more. But for now, I'm going to leave it. If I do change it, I will take a picture of it and post it on Instagram. So make sure you are following me over there. I do have my Instagram link down below in the description box. But I went through, I created the monthly section, and here is where I'm going to keep track. Mainly my work schedule because my work schedule is crazy. I don't have a consistent work schedule. Um, I'm a nurse, so I may work Monday, Wednesday this week, and, and Thursday, Friday next week, and then Saturday, Sunday the week after, or you know, a Sunday and a, and a Saturday, like not in that, in that order list. So like Sunday now, next Saturday. Does that make sense? <laughs> it's really confusing. So anyways, my work schedule is never the same. It's not consistent, which is okay. I'm fine with that, but that's the main thing that's going here. And then I also have a few other things, um, that I put here for personal stuff. So like, um, a couple of days that my husband works doubles. My mom's birthday is this month, which is very exciting, and her birthday party, which is also exciting. So those things are going here. And then you'll see on the right page, I wrote notes. And what I plan on using this section for is kind of pre-planning for September. So where I'm kind of up in the air on my planners and I'm not you know, stuck in just one planner, I want to be able to have a section inside of here for pre-planning. So if come September I decide to not use the bullet journal or if halfway through August I decide to not use it, I have everything for the next month already in one section and so I can pull it from here and put it into whatever other planner I decide to use. So that's what the notes section is for over on the right side. Now to create this, I ended up using these really cool highlighters that I found on um, Amazon. And actually I have a video coming up of some uh, pins that I ordered and some highlighters and stuff that we're going to try together. So make sure you guys are watching for that one. But I really like these. These are retractable highlighters and the colors that I chose are vintage. So there's two different packs. You can get like the vintage one and then there's bright colored ones. And I chose the like light green olive color to use in this spread. And then you'll also see that I have a Sharpie S note in a darker green. And so what I did is for each box, when I put the date on them, I made a highlighter mark with the olive green light color, and then I put the date over top of that. And then you'll see me add it here in a few, but I added my work schedule, and my work schedule is in that darker green from the Sharpie S yes note. So that's kind of how I differentiated those. And then I did use a gray Sharpie S yes note that has a little bit of a blue hue to it, um, I did that for other things. So like I said, my mom's birthday, her birthday party, my husband has a couple of double shifts that he's working, and I highlighted those in that gray Sharpie S note.
you can kind of see it, but off to the left side is my laptop, and I pulled that out so I could pull up my work schedule. Um, I usually do this on my phone, but if you guys didn't know, I film all of my YouTube videos on my phone. So just FYI, if you're wanting to start a YouTube channel, you don't need a big, fancy, expensive camera. Just use your phone. Um, so anyways, I pulled out my laptop so I could write my work schedule in here. And like I said, I ended up highlighting um, kind of color coding between work and personal items. All right, now we're moving on to the weekly spread, and I love the way that this turned out. It is so, so simple, so minimal, but still so functional. So I love, I love that combo. Over here on the left side, I created the calendar for August, and I just highlight the current week that the spread is for. And then underneath of that, you're going to see me make a box that is for goals. And this is where I'll set kind of my bigger goal for the week, and then each day I can set micro goals that help me move closer towards that bigger goal. Below that, I have a box, and I just titled this one Notes. Not really for sure what will go in there. It might just be a general to-do list. I have no idea. The box over here on the right side, this says Next Week. And so with this one, this is where I will keep pre-planning for the next week all in one place. So if I jump back into a different planner, I have everything for the following week already pre already pre-planned. So I kind of know what's going on and I'm not having to write things down multiple times or trying to figure out where everything is or using, you know, especially where I'm back and forth with all these different planners right now. So I love that I have a pre-planning section there. And then you'll see me pull some dot stickers out of a sticker book. I use the sticker book that's called Reach for the Stars. It's from the Happy Planner. And I pulled out some dots and the darker blue dots are for my work schedule. And I have one lighter blue dot. It's for work. I have a glucose um, glucometer actually training on Thursday. I just didn't want to use that darker one. I kind of wanted to separate the two. And then as you can see, I ended up using the light gray Sharpie S note. I love this one because it has a little bit of that blue hue to it. So it's like a light gray, but also a really light blue. And I love the way that that turned out. So I was going back to the calendar to look and see what days I worked this week. And then again, I'm using those dots to note those days. And I decided to add in just a couple of other stickers. So we have the quote sticker over there on the right. There's some star stickers and then that other star sticker on the bottom left. And it's just, it's very simple, but it pulls things together. It's nothing bright. It's nothing, you know, I love bright spreads. I do. I create them all the time, but sometimes you just need like a neutral, a neutral spread, something that's calm and chill and not super bright. And there are weeks that, that we all need the calm spreads and there are weeks that we need the bright spreads and there are weeks that we need the encouraging spreads, right? Okay, my friends, that is the setup. So now I will go ahead and show you some pictures so you can get a better look at each one of these layouts. Hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Seriously, have an incredible day, my friend, and I will see you in the next video.